Today we're going to be talking about real world inequality word problems. Um, this is in page uh, 235 in your textbook and it's 4.5a. The first example, I'd like you to um, pause the video and read this example. It's just, it's all done for you. Talks about an average. Add them all up, divide by how many to get the average. It's just like the um, next question number one that we're going to do. So you can pause for a moment and watch that. Or read that, excuse me. So we're going to go on and do number one here. It says the average of, so there's a key math word, average, 30, 35, 35, and 40, and some fifth number. Wow, that's the thing I don't know is at most 40. At most means less than or equal to. What is the maximum value of that fifth number? So the let statement's already started there for you. Let x be the fifth number. So I'm going to average. I add them all up just like the example up above. I add 30, 35, 35, 40, and x, the number I don't know. I divide by how many, which is 5, and I at most, less than or equal to, it should equal 40. This is a um, division and grouping symbol problem. That fraction line is the grouping symbol. So I'm in PEMDAS in reverse, I'm going to do my division first. I'm going to do the opposite of dividing by 5, which you can see they did in the example. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 first. And this will then cancel with that denominator of 5. So when I add 30, 35, 35, and 40 together, I get 140 plus that unknown fifth number. Has to be less than or equal to 40 times 5 is 200. Then I have a simple one-step inequality. I'm going to subtract 140 from both sides. And I get x has to be less than or equal to 60. So the fifth number, what is the maximum value of the fifth number? The fifth number at most could be could be 60 because of that equal symbol there. So my sable, the fifth number at most or is at most 60. At most, I'm using the words of the problem to answer it, is at most 60. The fifth number is at most. And if that equal sign wasn't there, then I would say the fifth number is at most um, 59. Oh, or it could be 59 and a half. Um, that equal symbol is telling me that at most it's 60. Jeremy brought, bought four books. The cost of three of the books were $10, 13 and $15. The average cost of the four books is at least $14. At least, that's greater than or equal to, meaning that it's $14 or $15 or $16. At least 14 means more than 14. What is the minimum cost of the fourth book? So I'm going to say let x equal the fourth book. So again, it's an average question, so I'm going to do it just like number one. And I'm going to add my four books, 10 plus 13, plus 15, plus my fourth book, which I don't know, has to be greater than or equal to $14 on average when I divide them by 4. So again, it's a grouping, division, grouping symbol, the fraction line. That's like this numerator being in parentheses and dividing. So the opposite would be to do the multiplying first. And I get, when I sum the three books that I already know about, I have $38 plus my fourth book has to be greater than or equal to, now 14 times 4 is 56. Subtracting 38 on both sides, I get x is greater than or equal to 18. So at most, the or the minimum, sorry, the minimum cost, what is the minimum cost of the fourth book? The minimum cost 
So I'm using the words of the problem, the minimum cost of the fourth book Got the equal symbol there is $18. So make sure you put a dollar sign on there, that label. So it could be $18, could be $20, could be $25. If I put $20 into this um, problem, because I can pick one to check, say I put $20 into this, 10 plus 13 plus 15 plus 20, that's gonna give me 58. When I divide 58 by four, I'm gonna get 14 and a half. So is 14 and a half greater than 14? Yes, so I know I have the right answer there. I picked 20. Um, and yes, it is greater than 18. So that is one of the infinitely many answers that I can have. The minimum cost is 18, but it could be 19, 20, could be $22.50. So that answer is correct. I checked it um, and let's go on to the next problem. This problem is very tricky. Um, it's got a lot to it. It's one of the harder inequality word problems that I've seen. Kevin's assignment is to complete a mathematics quiz with 25 multiple choice questions. For every correct answer, he gets two points. One point is deducted, so minus one, for every wrong answer. How many answers must Kevin get correct in order to score more than 30 points? There's 25 questions. He wants to get more than 30. Correct answers are two. Incorrect answers or wrong answers are worth one. So what do I know? How many answers must Kevin get correct in order to score more than 30 points? Well, it's asking me how many correct answers. So I don't know, I'm gonna say X is the number of correct answers. So let X equal the number of correct answers. That's what I'm trying to find. So there's only 25 altogether. Say he gets 20 of them correct. That means he would get five of them wrong. How did I get that? Well, if he got 20 correct, if I know how many he got correct, I subtract it from 25 to figure out how many he got wrong. Well, I need to know that. So my second let statement, and this might not be real obvious, would be 25 minus the number that he got correct. So I use the example, what if he got 20 correct? That means he got 25 wrong. What if he got 10 correct? That means he got 15 wrong. So I'm subtracting from 25 to figure out the number of wrong answers. Because there's 25 total. So once I know the right ones, subtract from 25 and that'll give you the wrong ones. So you had to kind of know that that was the second let statement there, that there's right answers and wrong answers. Well, right answers are worth two points. So I have to get more than 30. That's just the greater than symbol, not greater than or equal to. So his correct answers, so I'm just thinking out loud here, plus his wrong answers, and they're gonna get points added to them, has to be more than 30. Okay, well correct answers I'm calling X, but they're worth two points. So the correct answers are x, but they're worth two points, so I would multiply by two. The wrong answers are 25 minus x, but they're gonna deduct a point, so that's like minus one, I'm multiplying by negative one. Minus one for everything you get wrong, but plus two for everything you get right, has to be greater than 30. So this is a tricky inequality. So it's a distributive problem. So 2x plus negative 1 times 25 would be negative 25. Negative 1 times negative x would be plus x. Has to be greater than 30. Can't have plus and then minus 25, so you've got to put it in parentheses there, which I did. 
So now I've got like terms. Two, two x's and another x is three x's minus 25 has to be greater than 30. Okay, add 25 to both sides. Solve it just like equations. And I get 3x is greater than 55. Dividing by 3, dividing by 3, which doesn't go in there evenly, I get x has to be greater than 18 and a third. Well, can you answer a third of a question? No. If he answers 18 of them correctly, that's not enough. Because it wouldn't give me enough points. 18 would be 2 times 18 is 36. So we got 18 right. So I'm just checking 18. It's got to be greater than 18, though. This greater than symbol tells me it has to be greater than 18. 18 won't work. 2 times 18 is 36. And 7 would be wrong. So 36 and negative 7 is 29. 29 is not greater than 30. So that won't work. So he must, 18 is not enough correct. So he must, in order to get that score greater than 30, Kevin's got to answer 19 questions. He can't answer a third of a question. So it's got to be a whole number. And sometimes this happens with inequalities where you get mixed numbers. Well, there's no such thing as a third of a answer. So you don't say Kevin's got to get 18 and a third. That it's not equal, first of all, so it can't be 18 and a third. So you have to decide, is it 18 or 19? You've got to go up. So it is 19. You must get 19 correct answers. So this is a long table. Kevin must get 19 correct answers. To get a score greater than 30. or more than 30, more than greater than the same thing, more than 30 points. So he's got to get, and I could have stopped right here, but Kevin must get 19 correct answers. To get a score more than 30 points, I just kept adding on a little bit to that sentence. It's okay. So Kevin must get 19 correct answers to get a score more than 30 points. Woo, that was a hard one. It's a value problem. It's kind of like those money ones that we were doing. Because each correct answer has a value of 2, so you've got to put it into the inequality. And each wrong answer has a value of negative 1, so you've got to put that into the inequality. Tough question. Not sure that that, that one's real intuitive. Um, number 5 here. Natalie has $20 to spend at a stationery shop. So she doesn't have $20.50. She has only $20. She plans to buy a notebook that costs $3.50 and some pens that are $1.50 each. Well, $1.50 times each pen. At most, how many pens can she buy? Well, okay, let x equal the pens. So they're $1.50 for each pen. $1.50 times x. Um, at most, she how many pens can she buy? Well, she only has $20, so she can spend all $20, so it can be less than or equal to $20. So she's going to buy the notebook for sure, that's $3.50, plus $1.50 for each pen, and at most, she can spend $20. So she can spend the $20, so it's less than or equal to $20. Don't put dollar signs in your inequalities. That goes in the label, so we'll worry about that later. So we're going to, this one's a little bit easier than the prior question. We're going to subtract 350 from both sides. So you get 1650. Uh, one and a half, $1.50, or 1.50x. Is less than or equal to 16 and 5 tenths. So I'm going to divide by 1 and 5 tenths. I don't really need that zero on there. And I get x must be less than or equal to 11. So um, if she buys 10 pens, at most, how many pens? Oh, at most. At most. So I don't need to worry about 10 pens. 10 pens would be nice to check with, but 
It, it, it says at most how many pence can she buy? She can buy 11 pence because 11 times 150 is 1650 plus the three dollars and fifty cents for the notebook will exactly equal twenty dollars. So at most, Natalie can buy eleven pets. Natalie can buy at most. I'm using uh, the words of the problem. And that's really what you should do. Use the same English. Natalie can buy at most eleven pets. She could buy 10, she could buy 9, she could buy none, 0. That is one of the possibilities because there's infinitely many answers here. But it doesn't ask, you know, can she buy 0 pence? It says at most how many pence can she buy? So the largest number of pence she can buy is 11 because of the equal symbol there. So these are a little trickier than word problems, equation, equality word problems, because you have to think about the LUT statement. How do you answer it? And it's really a good idea to use the same language of the question to get the inequality sable correct. So we'll work on these tomorrow.